before we get into the video, I'd like to remind you that the first ever Challenger series decks are in stores now. The Universe's roster is grown with Cowboy Bebop returning with Spike Spiegel and Faye Valentine, and Trigun Stampede bringing Vash the Stampede and Nicholas D. Wolfwood. A quick spoiler warning that the cards contain stills from the show and there may be some show content discussion. Check with your local store to pick up these decks. UVS Games are also running a launch event from now to February 18th where you can earn yourself loyalty points, formerly known as redemption points, by playing as one of the four Cowboy Bebop and Trigun Stampede characters, and additional bonus points if you play all four during the span of the launch event. Check the link in the description for more details. If you don't already have a UGN account, when signing up, if you click the drop down for How Did You Hear About Us and click Content Creator, you can enter our name, The Daubers, and your account should be credited with 50 loyalty points. Thank you so much UVS Games for sending over this product to unbox. In this deck idea video we're looking at two Fae deck ideas, one not a Sonya concept and one a little bit out there. Again, check your Spike deck idea video for the disclaimer. Now, I don't normally play 7-handers, but I've got a Fae deck focus around throws that I'm actually quite excited to give a try. Now, I know Michael made a Spike Fro deck the other day, but you've all probably seen Froga and know that girls just do it a little bit better. She gives a consistent plus 2 damage option, and because the Fro's are going to be able to connect easily, you can use Phase Response to pick the top card of your discard pile up to make you a pseudo 8 hander. If you get Blood Evaluation out as well, you can also discard a momentum and then pick it up when your Fro hits. We'd have played more than one, but another free diff is needed. More on that a little bit later. So the attack lineup is exactly what you'd expect. All the throws that exist in life. So we're playing Draw Jammer, which is probably our meatiest throw, coming in for eight before Fae and Foundation buffs. Overhead reversal lets us build a zero diff, of which we have ten. This also helps with having foundations to use as Fae flip fodder. We're running free Faith Shield mainboard to make the most of creeping vine eruption and it helps that it's also a great defensive block and we're squishy. See, your gravity lift is probably one of my favourite throws, especially since it can be used for momentum later to make your turn easier. And lastly, reverse throw to begrudgingly fill out our attack lineup. Though this deck may be one that actually lets us proc the card draw enhance. We're looking to make our attacks pretty beefy, and so a carbo loading package is ideal. With energy suction and full on attack mode, it's guaranteed life gain triggers, and both Hatsumi's design and bench press flip to gain health. Though, if we're at full health, we can't gain health for Carbo, so we're playing a full playset of experimenting on quirks to lose health. We can also use this card on our opponent's attack we know we're blocking to gain health, and also ready Carbo on our opponent's turn. To add to the damage buffs, we're running for ending the dream for plus 4 damage, as well as interdimensional plants, which notably discards momentum for its ability, so we can easily pick this up with Fae. We have surprising skill in keeping Eri safe as stun hate, Hatsumi's design and high value target to help us block, and Eri for death protection. Yes, hiding behind small children helps you win more games. Pro fact. Syndicate target is a good low block that also loses a life for Carbo. Fast Gem takes away an attack, scary abilities. New training method helps us build our carbos, and Ryuku Agency Trainee can help us play around Breaker. For the sideboard, we have free Ruthless Mockery to hopefully stop attack turns dead, an extra area in Vash Tren for more protection, Lost and Fought to help with Problem Foundations, and a 4 Faith Shield. If we see two throws on life in the next set, Zero gravity lift and reverse roll could be replaced to be legal after rotation, or alternatively you could add some momentum spenders instead. Moving on to our second deck. So, I initially had an idea about using Fae to pick up a frog hop discarded for momentum, and then playing the rest that were in the discard pile. Then, I showed it to Michael and he made this. So, the idea is you play a frog hop, Picking up another one from your discard pile, then a school down smackdown to kick it from your pool. You're now free to play the frog hop you picked up, 
getting the one you just kicked from pool back to hand. I feel like I needed some sort of visual to show that whole sequence there. If A is committed, your hops also do a plus one plus one. And you can use the powerful slash EX abilities to get needed momentum into your discard pile. Now, I hear you're saying that's a one trick pony, but there's more. If you use number five pro hero to flip your frog hop, you can play rabbit kick to kick your now non attack card from the pool, giving the same semi loop. But with so many two card combos, how do we attempt to make it consistent? Luckily, we have access to two throws and can use our play set of pitching in to ensure Faye picks up the correct card. In a perfect world, we've poked a bit of our throws, have a frog hop or two in the discard pile, and then we just hit them with 5 speed, 6 damage till they die. Battle Arena is mostly here to help us attack for longer, but extra momentum can also be spent on powerful and EX. Labrava can use our excess momentum to see our rival's hand and check it's safe to come in for game, slash get rid of a high block. And Mimicry is just an extra copy of whatever key foundation we need. Fast Friendship, Struggling with Studies and Nice Try are here to help us block. All Worked Up can help us pass checks in general. Self Doubt can help us go further if been blocked. And Get the Scoop can also help discard attacks. We should be committed from using Froze, so Rescue Specialist gives plus one speed to our attacks. And Rival Combatant helps Schoolyard Smackdown do more. We can also off zone a Frog Hop. Fearless Frog can be used offensively and defensively to change zones, and also works nicely with all Worktop's discard response for plus or minus a damage. Incredible Display can cancel a response, and both it and Levitate can put you up a foundation in hand, with Levitate also giving some helpful card filtering. The Handler helps us not die to a big attack string, and Unbelievable Skill can replace itself with a skill down Smackdown from Pool helping with progressive difficulty. In the side we have free Anna voice to stave off big attack turns, passing through walls mostly as anti-breaker, but can also be brought in against assets such as Eri. You can get through small children if you go through walls. Some momentum spenders in decoy duplicate to make scary attacks go away, broken psyche to make them smaller, and finally an extra leak handler. The main difference between this deck and one that you use set 1 would be the Tom Capture would be replaced with Electric Jolt, for a more impactful card that still did the job. Thanks for watching guys, and let me know if you end up putting together any of these decks. Can we get a record for most frog hops in a turn? Last up will be our Nicholas D. Wolfwood deck ideas tomorrow, so keep an eye out.